This is the new Samsung M7 monitor, also known in full as 32M708 or 32AM700U. Gosh, gotta love those, you know, regional names. Anyway, it's a 4K UHD display that Samsung calls do-it-all screen. And the best way to describe it is a shrunken down, fully fledged TV that is actually a monitor that can do things that no other monitor on the market can do. And it costs only 400 bucks. Yeah. Let's talk about it because as it turned out, there are a few things I wish I knew ahead of time. Hey, Eastgren here, but feel free to call me E. So you may have seen this monitor popping, you know, in recent popular tech channels because Samsung is pushing this new product and, you know, sponsoring fellow creators. I, however, am not one of them, being sponsored, I mean, and I purchased this display myself. With that being said, being objective for me is very easy and I'm here to start exactly like that. So let's talk about everything wrong around the Samsung M7 so that we can truly grasp what makes it special and why despite everything that I'm about to say, the M7 would be my go-to recommendation in the near future. So here's what we're dealing with. We have a 4K panel, 3840 by 2160, but unlike the desired IPS displays, this is not an IPS one, it's a VA panel. It stands for Vertical Alignment. Now, VA panels are something of a compromise between a TN and an IPS panel. They offer, you know, the best contrast ratios, which is why TV manufacturers use them extensively. In terms of viewing angles, VAs cannot match the performance of IPS panels, of course. Screen brightness in particular can vary based on the angle, which is exactly the case and my first complaint with the M7. But in the meantime, you won't get the IPS glow, which is typical for my actually current favorite monitor, which is LG 32 UD99, which costs, by the way, three times as much as the M7. So right out of the box, this being a VA panel eliminates recommending this display to avid gamers. However, for me, even at 60 Hz, it does the job, no problem. While on the topic of the display itself, the monitor doesn't get as bright as you might think or hope, some 250 nits. But to me, the bigger annoyance here is the lack of easy control of the brightness itself. Meaning there's no simple way to use a slider unless I dig deeper into the settings and then choose between brightness from 0 to 50, which is odd. Where is the other 50? Is that percent? Or in this case, 50 is the new 100? I don't get it. Also, the remote that comes in the package of the M7, more on that in a second. With that remote, you can choose between two brightness options or display options, standard and dynamic. And that's it. What exactly is the difference? Samsung doesn't tell you. From my experience, it looks like standard is around 30 and dynamic is around 50 brightness and I'm still talking in Samsung's undefined units here. Weird. Next up, let's talk about connectivity. The M7 comes with three USB-A ports and one USB-C port and two HDMI's. In the package, however, it doesn't come with a USB-C cable included, which is not that big of a deal but it seems the monitor is picky as to what cable can be used to both charge at peak 65 watts and transmit data at the same time. Meanwhile, unfortunately, DisplayPort is not a thing here, nor is Thunderbolt. But again, with the proper USB-C cable, things are okay. Also, as I was doing my research, the lack of a USB-C cable in the box might be a regional thing because in Samsung's own tech spec sheet, it seems a cable must have been included in the package. In my case, it's not. Next complaint about the Samsung M7 is the extremely bare bones and basic stand, which allows you only for some vertical tilt and nothing more. No telescopic adjustment, no rotation or anything like this. Luckily, the monitor is VESA mount equipped, which is what I usually prefer to use. And that concludes my complaints. Now, let's see what makes this monitor special. The most special thing about the M7 is definitely the price. For between 350 and 400 US dollars at 31 and a half inches and 4K, this becomes a very desirable combo. And we're not talking about the cool features yet, just the fact that we have a 32 inch 4K panel 
at an affordable price. Sure, there are other competitors at around 350, but none of them can do what this monitor can do. Let's start with the fact that we have a remote, typical for Samsung TVs and perfect for when you wanna kick back and chill and relax, do something different from being in front of a computer. The fact that we have a remote means we have all of Samsung's TV smart features part of Tizen's operating system. So all your favorite apps and even more like smart view, smart things, AirPlay, Bluetooth are all here as well as an integrated Office 365 <laughs> built-in browser. So imagine you are connecting a mouse and a keyboard to a TV and you can do Excel spreadsheets. This sounds bizarre. Of course, if you have a Samsung device like the latest S21, you can use the opportunity to stream Samsung DeX, which is uh, you know Samsung mobile turned desktop operating system and be as productive as from the futuristic movies of the past, where you smear your finger on your smartphone display to control the big screen. You know, pretty cool. This being part of Samsung's ecosystem, you can even tap the phone on the corner of the display to trigger the screen share, which obviously I can't show you because I don't have a Samsung device. As soon as I got delivery, I was more excited about AirPlay 2 functionality, which meant I can use my M7 as my on-the-go display to share my MacBook Pro, my iPad, and my iPhone. Keep in mind that with AirPlay, you can run only full HD resolution. I tried this with an Intel and an M1 MacBook Pro, as well as a Lenovo gaming laptop, and in all cases, the picture tops at 1080p. Now, I've seen 4K resolution sharing in other reviews, but then again, I'm not sure what are the prerequisites for that. Still, having the option to drive picture from all my devices wirelessly is definitely appreciated. Using this monitor as a primary display for 10 days has been very enjoyable. Sure, picture distortion at angles is definitely a thing, and this HDR10 certification doesn't really mean much. But once I'm front and center, it has been great for day-to-day -day tasks and even doing some you know graphic work and video editing. Sure, it's not the most accurate thing out there, but you know, it does the job. As someone who suffers from migraines and being sensitive to flicker, I can easily say that I have experienced no physical discomfort, even after longer working hours. The remote, by the way, turned out to be one thing that I love a lot. First off, it is always on my desk and it easily allows me to switch away from my computer for, you know, when I wanna do something different like stream some content or maybe play a game. Also, I love Bixby's initial voice setup. Please read the following sentence, in sentence, in sentence. Okay, all jokes aside, Bixby is actually in a fast way to navigate through all the smart features, the store and all the various inputs. Since the monitor comes with built-in speakers, the remote comes in even more handy for when you wanna control the volume, unlike any other monitor out there. The speakers, by the way, are just okay. You can't really expect much of a performance at all, but you know, they work fine if there's no other audio source. So here's really what makes this monitor special. First of all, after using it, I find all other displays dull. After having all those smart features, you know, presented to me, I think all other monitors, especially the more expensive ones, should come at least with that level of smartness integration. Having a 32 inch 4K display with built in speakers, internal power supply, a remote control packed with all sorts of wireless and wired connections, and a 65 watt USB C charging capability makes this M1 very, very hard to beat. Sure, you can add a streaming dongle to any other monitor and make it smart, but it wouldn't be that seamless and really that do it all as Samsung has pointed out. Also, 32 inches is really the perfect size for anything. It's not as big as my 43 inch behemoth at home to use as a monitor, and it's not as small as most other 27 inch displays to use as you know entertainment from, from the couch or the bed. 32 inches is the gold standard if you ask me. So all I can say is good job, Samsung. If you're looking for a monitor right now, check out this playlist where I talk in details about monitors from 27 inches all the way to 43 inches, including ultra wides. It's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.